Hello, this is Ben the Bold, and today I'll be playing some Imperator Rome. Now, there are a couple reasons why I wanted to play and then broadcast some Imperator Rome to you today. And before we get started, I'd like to just share those reasons with you. First off, I'm a huge Paradox fan and have been playing Paradox games for a really long time. I think my first experience with Paradox goes all the way back to EU3. And then I went on to other titles such as Victoria 2 and even Hearts of Iron 3. And of course, I have, at this point, hundreds if not thousands of hours in titles like EU4 and Solaris and Hearts of Iron 4 as well. And I, like many out there, followed the initial build-up and release of Imperator Room very closely. And, uh, well, I think it's safe to say that the game wasn't what a lot of people were hoping for, at least not at launch. I admit, I played it for a while, got kind of bored, and then ended up just stopping playing altogether. But, the amazing developers over at Paradox did not give up on the game, and we have had a couple of patches since release day that have improved the game in several ways. So, I decided to give the game another try, and I realized something. I was actually having a ton of fun playing Imperator Rome. It turns out that there might just be a pretty good grand strategy game hidden underneath that spectacular map that the developers have built. Now I've watched a couple of the Let's Plays out there and I've realized that there just hasn't been a ton of new YouTuber content regarding the game in its current state. So much of what I find is several months old and is from when the game is first coming out. There just hasn't been as much YouTube content made since and I think that's a shame because while I do think that there's still a lot of room for improvement, I think the Cicero update is actually pretty decent. So, today I wanted to kind of just dive on in and uh, play some Cicero and put it up on YouTube because I just don't feel like there's enough Cicero content out there. I will admit, I am not very good at the game. I think it's pretty good, but I am not very good at it. So, anyway, I figured I'd just get in here and start playing for everyone. So, I've been, I was debating, you know, a lot uh, who to play first. And I, of course, thought about Rome, I thought about Epirus, because I have a, another Epirus uh, game currently, and it's actually going pretty well, I was thinking about trying to remake that. Uh, but, you know, I did just play an Epirus game. So, I actually think I want to start as a tribe, because there's a lot of tribe mechanics that I just, I'm not really familiar with, and would love to just take a deeper look at. Uh, and I was thinking specifically a tribe up here in the uh, in England region, so I think I should just go with the standard Iceni tribe. They have decent buffs. I mean, of course, they can use chariots like all of the barbarians. That is one thing that I wish, uh, and I'm looking forward to Paradox kind of sussing out a little bit more, making the barbarians in England and uh, the UK area a little different, the, the barbarians in Gaul, and then different from the barbarians in Spain. Because um, currently they can all use chariots as their barbarian traditions. And then the Iceni at least do have a unique heritage. Uh, they get a little bit better national tax, and they are kind of primed to civilize. Uh, so I think that's what we're going to try to do. We're going to take this tribe, take it from a you know bunch of barbarians living in the hills, and trying to turn it into a major kingdom on the British Isles. So without any further ado, let's of course get into Iron Man, and here's our ruler. <laughs> I, you'll have to forgive me, I'm not going to be able to pronounce any of their names, but Cantines, Can, Cantesina? Sure, Cantesina Morgana. So, let's go ahead and get started. Oh, here we go. Alright, so getting started here, we have a couple uh, cohorts that are directly under our control. We have a couple cohorts under control of our, um, our clan leaders, our, yeah, our clan chiefs. Um, let's go ahead and just take a look at the laws we can change. Now, I do think I'm going to be trying to centralize uh, because I want to take advantage of the Iceni heritage, which allows uh, gives us a uh, greater civilization level. So, it looks like we're going to be turning Venta into a major city, hopefully. It already is a city. That's one of the new updates in the uh, Cicero update. We have cities, settlements, and metropolises, so maybe Venta will one day become a thriving metropolis. Uh, or I might think about moving our capital down here to Londinium, uh, just kind of going with the historical flow and trying to turn Londinium, which is now just a settlement, into a major metropolis as we're going forward. So let's go ahead and deal with some of our notifications up here. We have some free idea slots now because we are uncivilized and we're just measly barbarians. We only have two idea slots. I'm going to go ahead and take the martial ethos for uh, better, better morale. 
And I'm going to come down here and I'm thinking I want uh, probably better general loyalty. Uh, each one of those costs me political influence, which is also a new update in the Cicero patch. Let's see, what should my first omen be? Uh, I don't have any citizens, so it doesn't make sense to increase my citizen output. At least I don't think I have many citizens. I mean, I have one citizen in Venta. Yeah, that's just about it. So I've got one, ci one citizen, so I don't really want to improve their output by 23.2%. Um, I think I'm actually going to go up here with the uh, monthly civilization change. I'm going to go ahead and just try to bump up my civilization value pretty quick. Uh, it should give us several bonuses um, as well as I'm going to bump up my centralization. So I'm going to go with Blessings of gob Gobbinus. <laughs> uh, sorry, again, you'll have to forgive my pronunciation, but that'll give us a little bit of monthly civilization change. Next, I do have she, my ruler, Canton, Cantessa. I'm going to call her Margana. Uh, Margana, she's pretty decent. Four martial, six finesse, uh, five charisma, four zeal. Um, that's okay. Uh, she could have been better. Hopefully, maybe her children or our next clan chiefs will be a little bit better. But I am going to go ahead and get her married. I'm thinking, let's go this guy. He has a high martial skill, which I tend to like. Uh, I don't know how this is one of the things that I do have questions about with the Imperator Room. I'm not really sure what uh, what the point of my spouse's traits are, unless I like appoint them to be a governor or something, uh, which I probably won't be doing, uh, in at least for a little while with my husband here. But I think I'm going to go with this guy, War Chief. That's a name. Um, I'm going to choose him. And we're just going to arrange some uh, happy married wedding festivities. There we go. Now, one of the bright things about not having many pops in my country, at least yet, hopefully we will be expanding, and hopefully be expanding quite rapidly. Uh, but one of the bright parts about not having too many pops is I am able to buy all, all sorts of invention. As you can see, I do have plenty of cash to go around. Now, I won't be getting a lot of research points, so it's not like these inventions are going to disappear anytime soon if I don't get to them for a while. My research level is going to be pretty paltry for a really long time. But as I said, uh, we will be trying to bump up our civilization value, which will in turn make more of our pops want to be citizens. We'll build some buildings that will turn our pops into citizens, and we'll just uh, we'll try to bump up our research points relatively quickly in this campaign. Um, before I buy any inventions, I'm going to just, because uh, it does cost some money to get trade routes, I'm going to just um, get some trade routes. I think I'm going to go with grain, because uh, it will um, help our cities grow a little bit faster. Not much, but a little bit. Uh, and then, do I have anything that produces local tribesmen happiness? That's good. Anything that produces tribesmen output? Again, I'm not super familiar with everything. Here we go. Local slave output, that could be good. I think I'm going to do Woad, produces tribesman happiness. And I have one more, which I'm going to go with cloth. Or, well, it doesn't really do me much good to get better research points. I'm instead just going to go with cloth. That's going to be a better tax rate. And I'm going to do it from, yeah, the Arvini guy. All right, so now I am going to build up my army. I think I'm going to put, I'd love to put my husband in charge. What happened to him? Is he around? No. Is he a war chief? No. Uh, I wonder what happened to him. Oh, well. I'm going to put, I usually like to put my ruler in charge of uh, my first army, but today I think I'm going to go with this guy. He's got just got a better martial skill, and I am going to be looking to go to war pretty early. And so I'm going to give him, I think, a couple... Well, let's look at my economy situation. I have a... It's a relatively decent income for where we are, especially for barbarians. I'm going to go ahead and take a couple warriors. Let's do three. And then... I actually really like light, in, light infantry. I know that they don't handle uh, hold up really well in a battle line, but they do do fairly well uh, in a siege. Um, so I could get a couple light infantry, or I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead 
and get a couple more archers. That's all the money I have for now. And let's go ahead and finally unpause the game, shall we? All right. And so as uh, our soldiers build, I uh, will go ahead and just say what my goal is for the campaign. I think first I want to take care of the Trinovantia, Trinovantia uh, directly to myself. That will pretty much double my population uh, in terms of size. Also, just while I'm thinking about it, I think I'm going to go ahead and just disband my navy. I don't foresee myself needing it for a little while. And so, yeah, I plan on hopefully traveling down, or uh, conquering down here. And then I would love to just go ahead and take this whole section of uh, England, uh, modern day England at least, uh, relatively quickly. That'll give me a good power base. It'll let me start building up some cities. Uh, and hopefully that will allow me to expand farther up the British Isles. So we're going to keep going. Let's see about you and your stats. Ooh, he is a pretty good general, 10 marshal. And she's all right. So now we've passed November. I meant to uh, stop at November 1st. One thing that I do know to do when you're a tribe up in here, up here in the British Isles is you want to go ahead and get to war before all of your uh, neighbors ally up. So I've built an army. Uh, it'll keep coming in. I'm also making just a little bit of money still. Yeah, I'm making quite a bit of money, so I might go ahead and just add a few more archers. Or one more archer, that's all the money I had. Uh, so I added another archer. That'll build soon. And now what I want to go do is go to the government tab and ah, I was hoping to summon a war council, but it looks like I can't do that right now. So, I guess I'll have to do it the old-fashioned way and just fabricate a, fabricate a claim. And I want it on the province of Icenia. After all, I am the Icenian. I want my province. I wonder why it wouldn't let me. Any neighboring country is not allied with the Iceni, is not a subject of the Iceni. I'm pretty sure they're not my subject. Uh, interesting. Uh, I'm getting some trade requests. I'm going to go ahead and accept the trade request for salt. Looks like I that will take my army maintenance down, plus give me a little bit more cash. As you can see, now that my uh, troops have come in, I'm making significantly less money. Uh, I am, I guess, since I'm doesn't look like I'm going to be going to war super quickly, I am going to go ahead and reduce my army maintenance. Uh, and since I'm not making any research points anyway, uh, or <laughs> I'm not making many, I'm getting... What is it? Point, point 0.4 uh, per month. So that's not super great. Uh, so I am just going to go ahead and come into my economy. I always get these buttons mixed up. I promise I will get better. Um, but I'm going to come up here into the economy tab, and I'm going to go ahead and... Well, that literally did nothing because I have no slaves either. So I guess I'll just leave it at min at, in the medium for now. But I am going to recruit, uh, reduce army maintenance just until we get a claim up and can go to war. Since uh, we, I'm not really sure who the next neighbor we have, since they're all going to ally up and we're going to aim for a weak target, I think I'm going to go ahead and try to secure an alliance with this tribe up north, the Cort Cortania. Uh, so I will offer them an alliance. And then, good. My two neighbors that I'm hoping to branch out in relatively quickly have not allied up yet. Uh, I'm sure they will. There will be a complicated web of alliances by the time my uh, uh, war justification, my claim fabrication, gets to 100%. Although, not yet. And hey, a man can dream, right? I will say that when we get enough money, which at the current rate might be a little while, I do want to go ahead and build a library. Uh, I know that uh, my civilization value is low, my centralization is also low, which means that um, my citizens will be unhappy when I start promoting pops to citizens, but I do want to go ahead and get them to be citizens relatively quickly. In fact, I might see if I can find Ooh, it looks like I can adopt another law. 
Oh, I'm getting another alliance. Oh, it's from our neighbors down south, the ones we're hoping to attack. They have allied, allied with their southern neighbors as well. That would be actually ideal for me. I would love a chance if I could call in uh, the Coritania into the war, and then we could together take out both of my southern neighbors. That would be perfect because that would be that would basically triple the amount of land and uh, significantly increase the number of pops I have. So I am going to just wishful thinking decline their offer for an alliance, and I might ask them for an alliance. Yes, they will give it to me. So, hopefully, they will not ally with uh, either of my allies, and no matter who they ally against, the three of us, assuming I can convince these two nations to join me in a war, will be enough uh, to take down whatever tangled web of alliances they have. So let's see, I currently have eight cohorts, and I have reduced army maintenance. If I unreduce it, all right, so I, even when I am running at full maintenance, it looks like I am in the green, which is always a good sign. I'll go ahead and press the play button again. So as I said, I'm going to try to increase my civilization level. Uh, I can think about doing that by using some political influence, although I think I'm going to reserve most of my political influence for these buttons up here. I do think I'm going to go ahead and take this absolute authority law. It's going to increase my monthly centralization and it is also going to increase my ruler popularity, which is pretty important. So, although, actually, I'm, I know that ruler popularity is very important for a monarchy, or an absolute monarchy, because it influences your legitimacy, which influences all of your surrounding character's loyalty. I am not sure how important popularity is as a tribe. If anyone knows, please let me know. Um, but adopting this new law, I have actually dropped my stability, which is not good. And hey, 15 popularity. I have, uh, I could go ahead and get rid of it right here by saying, uh, telling this guy to have it his way. Um, and yeah, I don't really love the idea of having a rival right now. I'm not sure what. Uh, if 48.7 is a great popularity uh, or not, I think, and he's a clan chief, I really don't want him, he's also currently loyal, I really don't want him to become a rival, I don't want him to lose any loyalty because my clan chiefs are my generals, he is also my best general, so I want to keep him happy, so I am going to give him what he wants for now and make him as happy as possible. I'm still gaining some money. I might think about going ahead and uh, buying a invention. I think the first thing, oh, I have another event. Oh, and here's one of the centraliz centralization events. So this could be good because I am trying to increase my centralization pretty quickly. Uh, I can go ahead and pay 25 political influence to gain one centralization. Uh, that sounds good. It will hurt my loyalty with the guy that I want to keep loyal, though. Um, yeah, no matter what I do, um, someone's dropping their loyalty. I do want the centralization, uh, so I think I am going to go ahead and risk it and have him drop significantly his loyalty. I'm also going to use up all the political influence I had, but I will actually just go into the negative with political influence. Uh, all right, let's see if I can just make him happier. He is gaining loyalty per month, so I'm not super worried about it. He, I could grant him a holding. I could exalt him if I had a little bit more money or bribe him. All of those things, so I'm not super worried about his loyalty. He is gaining loyalty. I think he'll be okay. All right, let's talk about inventions. I think the first invention I'm going to go for is... Let's look at... I'm making more money from taxes. I think I'm going to go ahead and just pay... A couple bucks, a couple denarii, a couple coin, whatever you want to call it, and increase my national tax rate. That should pay dividends uh, in the long run. Although I could have gotten claim fabrication speed. Maybe that'll be the next one I do. Speaking of, let's take a look. They still only have one ally. This is shaping up well for us. My clan chiefs are recruiting. That's perfect. I want them to have 
nice large armies, especially here in the early game, since as I increase my centralization, their retinue sizes will go down. The centralization's going up, 0.1 every month. That's nice. Ooh, I meant to uh, do this coin minting initiative before doing the absolute authority. I'll have to come back to that when I get enough positive stability as well as enough political influence. All right, I have enough money for another invention. I think this time uh, we do have lots of tribesmen. I do think I'm just going to go ahead and increase their output a little bit with the tribal reserve. Uh, actually, no, I'm going to go claim fabrication influence because that should hopefully speed up the claim that I'm currently working on. So this, when we're talking about tribes, this is kind of what you do in the early game. There is a lot of sitting around. Uh, so while we are sitting around, I just want to say that I, uh, I don't have a lot of experience playing as a tribe. That's why, one of the reasons why I really wanted to try the Iceni first uh, on YouTube. Uh, I have played as Rome a little bit. I will just admit, though, I don't really understand the... or. All right, so currently I don't really love the Republic mechanics, but I'm thinking that might just be because I don't really have a very good understanding of the uh, Republic uh, mechanics. Uh, but to me, like, I'm really interested in the characters in this game. So, like, I mean, here, here's my character. She is Ken... Cantacina. She's Morgana. That's what I'm going to call her. She's Morgana. And I'm really interested in her. I, I want to know her story. I want to, you know, see what her children do. I want to see what her spouse does. I want to have to play the clan politics game uh, and balance myself between the clan chiefs. Uh, and I, I know that there's a little bit of that with the different factions in the Roman Senate and everything. You know, we have the civic faction, the religious faction. Um, but, I don't know, it just feels very, honestly, a little too easy. Because in a couple of years, you're going to have a new faction so you don't are in charge. And you're going to have a new ruler. And so you don't really get attached to the ruler that you have. Whereas, when, you ha when you're playing in a tribe, or even more so a, an absolute monarchy, then you really get attached to your leader. You really, you know... You worry about how uh, how productive their children are. You worry about increasing their children's popularity. Ooh, I'm gonna have another. Uh, ooh, do I want to lose ten gold? Hmm. I think I would rather. I think I would rather just lose the ten gold since I am making gold than uh, have terrible food shortages. Uh, but anyway, back to what I was saying, I just don't feel like you can get as attached to your rulers in a republic. So I will admit that so far I've really enjoyed playing monarchies down here in the Greece, in Greece, uh, as well as Phrygia and Egypt. Uh, and I've, <laughs> I haven't done it near as much, but I have enjoyed my time as a tribe. And I, uh, I'm excited to try to build a tribe up into a monarchy here. Uh, although, and one day I do want to return to republic, either Rome or Carthage. Uh, and try out some of the Republic mechanics as well. All right, so I am 71% of the way to my uh, claim fabrication, and they still have not uh, gotten another ally. So this is looking up for us. We will have to see uh, how it actually goes. I think I'm going to go ahead and just get another archer. Yes, I think an archer would work well, and I'm, uh, and I will go ahead and see if I'm in the right stance, in the best stance. I guess I should go to bottleneck. I typically just go whichever has the best effectiveness, uh, so in this case it's going to be bottleneck, and that'll uh, perform well against anyone in shock action, So, and that's a relatively common one, so I'll go with that. I can get another invention. I don't think import value is helping me that much. I mean, let's see how much money I'm making from commerce. Not much. Uh, so instead, I do think I'm going to go with tribesman output. And again, eventually I plan on getting enough money to buy a uh, building. I think I'm going to go with library first. Go ahead and increase the number of citizens I have. All right, so we're at 85%. Uh, of our, our fabrication is at 85%. Uh, 
I'm going to go ahead and just put my army on full maintenance. I'm still making plenty of cash, it seems. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go to full maintenance, just so that they are all ready to go by the time we are ready to declare this war. And they thankfully still don't have another ally. So if our allies join in, I really do think we will be able to take this. And that'll be, we will be well on our way to s taking over the entirety of the British Isles. Uh, and I do think I'm going to try to colonize Ireland. If that does happen, then I will be able to, uh, what, hit this button, Unite Albion. And I think that might be just the preliminary goal for this campaign. I know that there's an achievement to get it done by uh, the year 500. I don't think I'm going to try to do that. Uh, and as I said, I'm painfully average at this game. Uh, I just happen to like it, and I feel like it needs more content on YouTube, especially post-Cicero update. So I'm not necessarily trying to do anything super crazy, super complex. I'm just trying to play the game, have a little bit of fun, uh, and share it with anyone who maybe is also looking for uh, more Imperator Rome Cicero update content on YouTube. And hey, who knows? Maybe this will uh, give me an excuse to finish a Paradox Grand Strategy game. All right, so our claim is done. Unfortunately, we still are not at uh, full morale, but I think I'm going to be okay with that uh, as both my allies are willing to join. Now, I will have to be careful about this Dobrodina uh, because they are also going to want this land. So the very first thing I want to do is come into this profit, <laughs> province or this region uh, and take Duro Cobrivus uh, before Dabunia can. Again, sorry about the pronunciations. Oh, it looks like they are once again asking me for an alliance. I'm going to definitely decline because I want to declare war on them. Speaking of and just, I am going to go ahead and do that. I have called in my allies. They have called in theirs. And let's make sure. All right, currently I'm just at war with only, they may not have called in, or maybe at least not yet. So in that case, since they do not appear to be in this war yet, I'm actually gonna go ahead. I do have the political influence, so I'm going to just fabricate a claim because that is where I want to attack next. Unfortunately he does have several more alliances although some of them are not on the uh, the mainland. That Dobunia, Dobunia one will be a headache though. Anyway let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Let's win uh, the war we're fighting first. I do just want to hold back my first warband, my main army, for just a second while I uh, still recover my morale. I don't think I am in any danger of uh, losing right away. But here we go, oh no, an event. It looks like we have a scandal in our court, unfortunately. That just is a part of everyday life in the Iceni clan council. Ordinarily, we would simply ignore such petty squabbles. However, on this occasion, the esteemed Cavulus Caractatus, whatever, has found in flagrance delicto with his lover, what's-her-face. Uh, it's really none of my business, but I do think I'm going to get involved. Um, let's see, is he a good magistrate? Let's take a look at some of our, at our offices. He's an okay magistrate. Eh, this guy's fine. I'm going to go ahead and, I don't, I'm going to go ahead and just toss him out of office, put a new guy in. Or I could just put him back in. I'll just put him back in. I don't think anything bad happened there. Um, all right, so we looks like we are going to be invaded. They're probably going to see just down, take a couple slaves, um, take maybe take some of our pop as slaves. I'm going to be okay with that. I really don't want to engage until my army is at full morale, though, which will be a minute. My, the morale growth in the early game is actually pretty low. But I do have a larger army than their entire army combined, so... I do think we'll be in good shape. Oh, my coast has been plundered by pirates. That is annoying, especially considering I do not have a navy. So I'm just going to have to deal with that for a little while. 
All right, I can tell that they are building up an army quickly. Let's actually see. Look, they started out this war with 10 cohorts, now they have, or with eight cohorts, now they have 10. Uh, I'm not super worried about it because I happen to have a much larger army uh, when you combine all of our allies together. Which I'm gonna hopefully let most of my allies do all the fighting because, well, I don't want to lose the manpower. The manpower growth looks 68 pop or 68 people per month. That is so slow. Thankfully, this my manpower pool does not replenish my clan chief's armies. Uh, just my main army up here. So I'm gonna try to use my clan chief to do most of my sieging uh, and let my allies do most of the fighting while I just take most of the land. Oh no, we've been insulted, and by our allies, I'm going to say, okay, you didn't mean to do that. <laughs> we'll let this one slide. We're still making money. We're actually making pretty good money. Uh, so I am going to get a, uh, increase our supply limit. That way I don't take as much attrition, hopefully. Oh, and we've been insulted again. They really don't like us. I'm still just going to say, okay, that is fine. Because, well, when you're fighting my battles for me, I won't complain if you uh, uh, call me bad names behind my back. And yeah, it looks like this is going to be a pretty successful first war. I do wish that uh, their allies in the south had not reneged on their deal and um, joined the war as well. I would have loved to have picked up all of this land all in one go, but it is what it is. Uh, I can't help what the AI decides to do. Instead, I can just try to take advantage of it. I'm going to go ahead and move my main army, my first warband, back to Vetia, uh, Vent, Venta, sorry, where it won't take any attrition. My clan chiefs are in control of the siege, so we should be in good shape. I don't see any reason why I would want to assault their uh, walls. I don't have, I don't believe my army is filled with light infantry. It has some, and look, I already won. So that is going to uh, be our first victory of the campaign. I'm gonna go ahead and sue for peace. And I want it all. I don't wanna give anything to my allies because I wanna keep them relatively weak too. But boom, just like that, I have doubled the size of my country and uh, doubled the size of the pops in my country. Now, we have to think, uh, what will we do with their elite? Now, I, am, I almost always take banish those of class and put the rest of the sword uh, because I do like that um, 0.5 aggressive expansion just done away with. Um, sometimes I find it useful to gain some popularity Although, again, as I said, I'm not 100% sure what popularity does with tribes. Uh, I'll have to do a little bit of research and find out uh, what that does. Uh, I don't really want to pass judgment on all the important families one by one or imprison their leaders. So I do think, in this case, I'm going to do what I normally do and just get rid of some of that aggressive expansion. And boom, so here is our new country. We've taken up, what is this, Essex, uh, and the Essex region. We have a pretty nice sized army for an early tribe like this. Uh, we didn't lose hardly any manpower. In fact, I think we are net positive on the amount of manpower we have total for the war. It does look like uh, Kuritana is interested in breaking their alliance with us, which, I mean, they insulted us several times and we basically used their manpower to uh, win a war. So, ooh, and they want to fight Dobunia. Dabunia. So I'm actually thinking that maybe instead of continuing south, maybe me and Dubini, Dub, Dubunia, excuse me, sorry, uh, will uh, team up to uh, take out our mean neighbors to the north. So maybe I will try to grab an alliance uh, with one of their other neighbors, um, but, but, but we'll see. Anyway, I think that's going to do us for today. I've been talking for about 35 minutes. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be really good. When we come back, I will start working with the pops in this city. Anyway, hope you all are having a great day, and I will see you tomorrow.